All right, my friends, we're going to solve a killer exam problem that involves the Van't Hoff equation, and this is it right here. What is the equilibrium constant at 100 degrees Celsius and one bar for the reaction below? And it's a short problem with a short equation, uh, but we're not given much information. We have the reaction gives energy at 298 Kelvin of this value here, and we want to know what an equilibrium con the, what the equilibrium constant is. And the Van't Hoff equation is ln K2 over K1. This is one version of it anyways. Uh, this is geared towards a general chemistry class, so we're not using any calculus. Or it goes 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And unfortunately, we're not given much other information. We're given temperatures, but we're, we're not given an equilibrium constant, which we normally are. So we need to get it. So the trick, one of the tricks in this problem, there's two tricks. One of the trick, tricks is that we need to get the equilibrium constant from the Gibbs, changing Gibbs free energy. And we're going to use that using this relation that you likely have seen in class before. Uh, now we have all the information. So if we so solve for ln k, we would get negative delta g naught over rt. And this is logarithmic form. We want to convert it to exponential form. So k is equal to e to the power of this stuff, negative delta g naught over rt. Sorry, that's an r. And we'll just plug in some numbers here, e to the, now, now the Gibbs free energy, changing Gibbs free energy is in kilojoules per mole. And I'm going to kind of proactively, I'm going to convert this to joules per mole. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I know that R is in joules per mole. So you have various choices of R, if you, values of R, if you look in your formula sheet. Uh, you want to choose the one that has joules in it, so not kilopascals or bar or anything like that. Uh, so joules per mole Kelvin, you probably don't have one that has kilojoules, so you want to make sure that these joules cancel out. And this is at 298 Kelvin, so 298 Kelvin. Okay, so our joules cancel, our moles cancel, and our Kelvins cancel, which means our equilibrium constant is unitless, which is a good thing. So this is e to the power of, oh, and I almost fell for this fatal error. See this negative here? This negative is because of this negative, but the Gibbs free energy, change in reaction Gibbs free energy is negative. So I got to do, if I want to keep all my negatives in, accounted for, I have a negative and this is a negative number. So we have negative of the negative, which makes it positive. So e to the power of 16.45 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 8.3145 times 298 is, uh, okay, 764.46, 764.46, so 7, 7, oh, 764.46. So that's our K. Now I'm going to call this K1. It doesn't matter which K this is, but I'm going to call these the ones. And then this will be K2 and this will be T2. This will be, this will be T1 here. So that's important when we're plugging it into our uh, Van't Hoff equation here. So now that we got our K1, we want our K2, that's our question mark. We have our two T's, but we don't have the change in enthalpy for this reaction. <laughs> so that's the other trick. How do we get it? We're not given it. Well, if you're not given it, and it's usually stated, although I said this is a killer exam problem, so you might not need to know this, but you can get this from the table of values, and you'd likely get an exam problem where you'll have to use that. Uh, and if you look at our table of thermodynamic values, this is one that I pulled up here that I like. Uh, we can get the heats of formation, and from that we can get the reaction enthalpy. So, to get our, this here is the reaction enthalpy, delta H naught. It's going to be the sum of the enthalpy of formations of the products minus the sum of the reaction enthalpies of the reactants. 
And I made a little space here because we got to multiply it by the stoichiometric coefficients, which are the numbers in our balanced chemical equation. So we'll go through. So for products, it's going to be 2 times whatever the enthalpy of formation of ammonia is. I got it right here. Negative 46.11. So negative 46.11. Again, this is in kilojoules per mole. So we're going to have to eventually convert back to joules minus. Now, this is going to be zero because these are elements in their reference state. And if we look at our thermodynamic values, if we go to, say, uh, N2 gas, that's zero. And same thing with H2 gas. That's zero as well. So the reactants have zero enthalpy of formation. So that's nice. So then this, this answer is just negative. So 92.22 kilojoules per mole. And that's all, that's all we need. Okay, we can do the question. So we got our K1, we got our enthalpy of formation. So we can plug it in and solve for K2. So we'll bring all of this, this stuff down. Uh, so T2 is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, T1 is 298 Kelvin. We, we got to convert. Everything's got to be in Kelvin. So we'll bring this down here. And ln K2 over K1, which is 764.46 equals negative. Now, this is a negative, so this is negative 92.22. And because we're dividing it by R, R is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. This has to be in, in joules, so times 10 to the 3 joule, oh, joules per mole. Uh, extend my brackets there. 1 over, oh, 1 over, there we go. That was a hard line to draw. <laughs> T2 is uh, it would say 100 degrees Celsius, which is 373.15 Kelvin, if we multiply it by 273.15. And T1 is 298 Kelvin. OK, so we'll do the right-hand side first. So the right-hand side, so a negative and a negative, that'll be positive. So 92.22 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 8.3145 times 1 divided by 373.15 plus, oh, no, it's not plus, it's minus. It's minus. It's a subtraction. Ooh, that was a close one. Okay. Phew. Minus. I love these calculators where you can see what you can type, and you can see if you made an error. Okay, so negative, not too big of a number, 7.496. 7.496, so 7, negative, 7.496, was that negative? Yes, it was negative. Okay, so this is logarithmic form. We're going to convert it to exponential form. This is like long KU, so K2 over our number, 764.46 equals E to the power of negative 7.496. So, K2 equals 764.46 times e to the power of negative 7.496. It's going to be a small number, I believe, because this is a negative exponent. Alrighty, so now this is the whole number, right? Oh, no, I, I'm going to delete this. Uh, just, I don't want to mess things up. 764.46 times... E, where's the E? E to the power of negative 7.496. And that looks good. Equals, okay, so 0 0.4245, 0 0.4245. And we'll round this to one. Uh, how many sig figs is this? Four. This is this is four oh, but we got to look at the same number of decimal places. We'll do three. We'll do three sig fig. So zero point four two four. So K two equals zero point four two four. 
it went down, right? K1, what was K1? 764. So it went down. If this is, this is um, 300, this is 100 degrees Celsius. Oh no, this is, uh, what was this? 100 degrees Celsius. So three, oh yeah, no, I'm okay. 373.15 Kelvin. I thought I messed up my, my temperatures. So when we went from this way, we increased the temperature, right? We increased the temperature, but decreased the equilibrium constant. And the equilibrium constant is products divided by reactants, the activities or the concentrations, pro pressures, the products over reactants, technically it's the activities. Well, this went down. That means this is a shift left, shift left. So we shift the reaction to the left. We got more reactants because we needed to make K smaller, right? It's products over reactants. So if we shift it to the left uh, by increasing the temperature, that means this is an exothermic reaction. What was our delta H? See, our delta H was negative. Delta H was negative, which means this is an exothermic reaction. So increasing the temperature will shift it to the left, which coincides with the numbers we got. All right, good luck on your midterms. Good luck on your final exams, your quizzes. I know you can do this. Just hang in there with chemistry. Uh, you can pass and you can do very, very well if you practice through these questions. Cheers. Cheers.